You owe me $95,000, and I want it now. But what about me and my four children? I'm going to have to sell the cattle ranch. How much? $200,000. Oh. I've got to pay my father-in-law $10,000. Oh, why not buy insurance? Decisions, decisions. Oh, pay me. Lawyer's salary, please. Okay. There's a game called Life that's really worth living. You and your family have got to play it. The Game of Life, from Milton Bradley. The Game of Life. Oh, good night. Hello and Happy New Year's. It's good to see everybody out. You're starting the year out well. Here you are with us, and, and uh, you're looking good on this first Sunday. Let, let me ask, how are you doing on this first uh, Sunday of the new year? Now, for me, let me say this, and this might catch on this year. Let me say this. With where I'm at right now, just know this, that I'm hunky-dory, full of glory. Who's with me? Come on, there you go. That's going to be our new saying. We're going to shift from, I'm all that in a bag of Doritos. We'll still hear that. Please don't, I'm not going to throw that out. And, uh, and uh, of course, we'll, we'll just continue to, I guess, develop our theology this way. Let's, let's say it that way. So, I'm just hunky-dory, full of there you go. Now, it is wonderful to see everyone out. And let me say, as I always do, a big thank you to our amazing uh, team here at Elevating Life Church, because I believe most know how fortunate we are, because uh, our church, we don't believe in half-hearted, uh, let's say, worship or this time that we come together. We believe in wholehearted worship when it comes to praising God and serving people uh, through Jesus. Amen? And so, of course, Jesus is uh, our good shepherd. We're going to jump right into our message today, so I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles, please, to the book of 2 Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 for this time uh, together. Now, as you're getting there, how, however you're going to do that, through hard copy or or your phones, or whatever tablet. Uh, let me give you a little bit of direction today. Today, for the next few moments, I want to ask you this question. Why would you waste your life adding value to nothing? Towards the goodness of life. Let me ask that question again. Why would you waste your life adding value to nothing towards the goodness of life? Now, Christian, do you realize your responsibility is to add value to the goodness of life? And let me say this, that's all of life, not just in your little area. Now, let me say this, wherever you be, everybody say be. It's your duty to increase and grow life. To grow, let me say it this way, your life to the point that it enlarges the bigger picture of life that gives way to abundant living. Again, let me ask that question. Why would you waste your life adding value to nothing towards the goodness of life? And we can even say God. Now, please understand this morning, God wants nothing more than to increase your life and see you grow in His ultimate goodness, His ultimate purpose. But to do so, folks, we must be connected. Uh, we can use the word bonded. We must truly have togetherness with God and others to play in the bigger game of life. Today, I want to introduce our 2021 year's theme. It's your move, as Carrie shared. Never stop playing. And also, I want to introduce our year's scripture. Last year was in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. This year, I want to introduce our scripture by preaching a message titled, The Game of Life. 
So with that, read with me our year scripture to begin our year-long journey and to start the message, The Game of Life. Here in 2 Corinthians 9.8, the Apostle Paul is speaking. He just had a conversation uh, with the church in Corinth on uh, generosity, uh, benevolence, part of God's love. And he, he comes to this point and he gives just a great uh, understanding of where we should be uh, with our vision, with where we're at in life in the sense of goodness and abundance and everything that comes with that. He says this, and God is able to, to bless. That word is reward. God is able to reward or bless you. What's the next word? Abundantly. So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Do you think Paul here in, in, in his writings is trying to communicate something about all. He says, all, all, all. Number three come to mind in the sense of our faith, in the sense of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He wants to bless you with all things. And he wants you to abound in every good work. So with this, join me in in prayer as we leap into the new year, understanding God can support us abundantly always as we play the game of life. So with that, let's pray as we go into this new year. Lord, thank you for abundant blessings. And forgive us for losing sight of your ample support. We ask for mercy as we know we're guilty. At the same time, we ask for grace as we learn our responsibilities, our duty to add value to your goodness. We now yield to your perspective, Lord, and teachings to live in your power. In Jesus' name, And everybody says, Amen. I am a little shaky on this New Year's Eve. New, New Year's Eve, where are we at? New Year's Day, or a couple days after. I'll get there. I've been writing for the last two days, John. Pooh, 16 hours. By the way, before I get into this uh, next part, uh, the next book is, uh, uh, the scope is out. Uh, the next book uh, coming out is Wonderfully Weird Goodness, exactly what we're preaching today. So if you're looking for that, it's going to be coming out. Uh, it's going to be coming out worldwide uh, Easter this year. So pretty excited about that doing a lot of work with the team in Los Angeles and Indiana and some other places. So uh, be praying for that. Uh, so anyway, let's jump into this message, the game of life. Now, most here are familiar with the board game of life. And by the way, this is going to be our theme for the whole year. We're going to use board games to launch us into our message to help us to relate a little bit to uh, the lesson that God has for us. So every, every week we'll be presenting a new game. But today, most here are familiar with the board game of life. Now, the game was originally created back in 1860. It's about the same time I think John was born. All right. Now, we know this, and we, we see it on, on the screen here. It's a checkered type of game. Now, let me ask you, who here has actually played the game of life. Very, yeah. Sir, you didn't create the game, did you? Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, the game. Many of us have played the game. Now, the game sim simulates, excuse me, a, a person's travel through life from cradle to grave. Now, I know this for you that are very detailed. It actually starts in high school, but I'm trying to get my point across. Yeah, okay, the life for us, <laughs> the games, <laughs> that actual game uh, simulates a person's travel through fr from uh, cradle to grave. Now, hear this. The object of the game is to be the player with the most money at the end of the game or at the end of life. Now, with the, the one with the most money or toys, if you will, wins. 
Now, the object of the game uh, reflects the same attitude, or we can say perspective, of a popular bumper sticker back in uh, the 1980s. I'll bring you back to where I'm at today. You, 1880s, I'll be 1980s. The popular bumper sticker, if you recall it, he who dies with the most toys, we know it, don't we? Now, this is a prevailing, let me say this, secular view, view about life. Now, this view, hear this this morning, this worldview, this, this view about life should make a Christian sick to their stomach. Some of you guys don't look like you're convinced. Why? Because this view, this worldview, folks, steps outside of God's design and, is, and, and steps into the nothingness or the emptiness of man's way of thinking, feeling, and acting. It's a terrible way to play life. And I'm speaking in reality. Folks, I hope you understand who you are, who I am, who we are is far more important than what I, you, or we have. Are you with me? Proverbs 22.1 gives witness to your perspective as you claim to be a Christian. It says this, a good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed, that means dignity, that means self-worth. That means to evaluate yourself in the goodness of God is better than silver and gold. People, our highest value, our highest desire or motive, I can say, should never be great riches. It should be purpose. Do you agree with me? Do you agree with me? I guess you're going to have to struggle, some of you, with this. Now, this proverb doesn't say great riches are evil. It says if you desire great riches, that's what motivates you. That's what wakes you up in the morning. That's what gets you going, getting more toys because you want to win the game of life. It's saying if that is your highest value over a good name, we can even say a good life then you're headed towards nothing. And let me say this in our day and age. Nothing goes a long way. Are you with me? So again, why would you waste your life adding value to nothing towards the goodness of life and or God? Nothing is the answer to why most people don't add value to a good life. I mean, I want you to look around. I want you to see in your mind's eye that nothing, what I mean by that, is the emptiness of true life. So let me ask you here. How are you doing when it comes to playing the game of life? Not the board game again, but in reality. Do you believe the objective is the same of of that of the materialistic board game of life or the same as the bumper sticker? He who dies with the most toys wins. Now we can say everything we want, but your actions speak louder than your words. Are you with me? We've got to step in reality to resolve some of the issues that many of us, not just here, I'm talking about the overall experience, if I can put it that way, of the Christian faith. I hate that word experience. By the way, I'm going to go rogue here just for a little bit. Um, (laughs) Nothing's going to change. Thank you, Carrie. I'm going to challenge you with something today. just came to my mind. I want to challenge you to get out of the experience of Christianity. What do I mean? I need you to get out of the experiences that you have throughout the week and step into the total truth of what it is. 
Are you with me? We say worship in this. What happens with most Christians is we go to church and we, de- we go to church, we have this experience, and then we detach ourselves from Sunday and we live our life over here in our public life. And then in our private life and our faith, we come over here and we, put, we take it out of the pocket on Sunday. But you, most of us, detach ourselves from our faith. Are you with me? Reality, sometimes is grim, but that is the fact, not just uh, my opinion, when it comes to most Christians. We've got to literally understand it's not an experience, it's part of it, yes, but it's not the whole of it. The whole of it is total truth with the capital T. He's with me. got to get my breath because I know what's coming. <laughs> that was a commercial. Where was I? Anyway, I don't remember. Oh, how are you doing when it comes to playing the game of life? Again, in reality. Do you believe, again, that objective or that bumper sticker? Now, looking around, as I've already sh- shared, I'm going to get back on my notes here. I have to say, we have been influenced towards nothingness, rather than towards something. Otherwise, why would we be so miserable, unhappy, and depressed all the time? We need to wake up and we truly need to say, uh, see something, and that something is the object of our faith, and the object of our faith is God. God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, J- Jesus. We have to wake up to the object of our faith and allow God to get over our life, pass through us, and and allow us to go through the total truth and the breadth of what that is, as Jesus shared in John chapter 4. You, God, excuse me, God has intelligently designed all of life so that all things at all times can have everything they need to live abundantly in every good work, period. Again, let me ask, why would you waste your life adding nothing, or value to nothing, I should say, towards the goodness of life? Are you listening, teenagers? You need to learn this now because college will screw you up. It's been many years now, but... It seems just like yesterday, and some of you know this story I want to share with you. But I recall it like it was just like yesterday. I recall the moment I, or I realized that life was bigger than just myself. Anybody have that epiphany with me? Do you recall that moment? If you don't recall that moment, come see me after this. And it's been more than 40 years now where I was a rebellious surfer lying on the beaches of San Diego, California. And there I recall looking up into the sky, night sky there, and asking the question, is there more to life than merely surviving? And it was there, as most know, I I set out to answer the question. And now with much confidence through God, not through my own teachings and my own experiences and my own toxic experience, but with much confidence through God and experience and discipline, I found the answer to be a resounding yes. Now, at the time, when I did ask this question, is there more to life, I believed I was living a good life. Why? Because think about it. I was living on the beaches of San Diego, and there in Southern California, soaking up the rays, doing pretty much anything I wanted within reason of not hurting myself or anyone else. Seems good, right? Leave me alone! But what's the issue, folks? Well, my goodness was just that. Me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I bring somebody else in us. And we lived in our little cave, and many people still live in their little cave of family or relationships. It's a selfish attitude in the long run. And all I was really doing 
was wasting life away and doing nothing towards the goodness, the bigger picture of life. Yes, I had to get myself anchored, but at the same time, I have a role and responsibility. Or otherwise, I'm just living in my little cave, my own, own little um, uh, selfishness. And I was nothing. Galatians 6, 3, some of you are familiar with this verse, says, For if anyone thinks he is something, that means you're the center of your world. Okay? When he is what? Nothing. He deceives Himself. And that's exactly where I was. Oh, I was living a good life. A lot of people talk to me. I want to get to, to this place. We even joke about it. Delilah, wherever you are, let's go to Tahiti. And it's just, that's fun to think about, but that's not reality. Folks, within yourself, you can believe whatever you choose. Perspective, if you will, is in your control. The, and there's many, let me say, worldviews out there. Uh, to include the nothingness of selfishness. However, now I need you to hear this. When evaluating all the systems of thoughts, uh, thought or, or, or philosophies under the sun, it all comes down to two world views. Nothing or something. Nothing being a person living towards... Uh, or towards uh, uh, what did I start with that? Nothingness, right? Living towards the image of man is what I'm trying to say there. You know, the philosophy uh, or objective of the board game of life, the one with the most money or toys wins. And something now, the object of our faith, being a person living towards the image of God, you know, the philosophy or wisdom of God that says, I'm able to support you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, uh, that you have everything you need to abound in every good work. Are you with me? I don't know about you folks, but I'm going to lean into something rather than nothing. Now, just like me, folks, I need you to hear this, and every other human being that's ever breathed, you are going to have to struggle through what all of this means. You're going to have to struggle with God and others. That's why we come to church and work with each other. You're going to have to struggle through understanding the nothingness of man and the wisdom or something of God. Proverbs 4, 7 says this, and this is, um, this is how I start my last book, if you read it. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get what? Data, information, knowledge, wisdom. That's the way it goes. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it costs all you have. If it costs you just your car. No, 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 that's not what it says. If it costs you just, you know, a little bit of time. No. Though it costs all you have, get what? Because you got to get understanding there because the next step is wisdom. Now, what do I mean by struggle? Well, let me share a little bit of my struggle to help understand what I mean by struggling through nothing and something. I hope the voices of your head are gone right now. You need to pay attention. If not, you can be mad at that butter and you go think whatever. But this is so important. Are you with me? Let's go back to the moment I asked the question, is there more to life? Back when I was lying on the beach as an adolescent there. Now understand, we've got to understand this up to this point, which I was only... I was, just going, just in junior high, I pretty much believed about nothing. In other words, nothing was my direction. Where there's no vision, uh, the people perish. So right now, I'm going to ask you in your mind's eye, what is your vision for the end of your life? Is there something or is there nothing there? And only you can answer that. Is that vision clear? Because where there is no vision, you perish. So there, my direction was nothing. It was just la, 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 I'm going to make it the best and whatever happens, happens. You know, back to the board game and the sticker and all that stuff. Now, because of my curiosity, I went a-searching for the truth. That's a capital T, folks. And the first obstacle 
I hit was the Big Bang Theory, not the TV show. The theory. Being taught in the schools I attended in San Diego, California. Now, the Big Bang Theory, as it was taught in the early 80s, said this, that in the beginning, there was nothing. And then for some reason, folks, I need you to follow this here because this reasoning is interesting. And then for some reason, they said, all of this nothingness gathered itself. And apparently, as they presented it, if you put this much nothing in a place that isn't there, guess what, folks? They said it will cause it to heat up. Are you with me? So you have all of this nothing in a place that isn't there, and you don't even know when it was there because time doesn't exist. So therefore, it wasn't even there when or where or whatever, wherever, whatever, wherever, whatever. It wasn't there, people. Are you with me? So all that nothing in a place that doesn't exist and gathered up in a place that is not there now or then, they said, this will make it to blow up. Did you hear me, people? Nothing. Everybody say nothing. Get it out of your thought now. Caused it to explode. And this is what they call expansion or life. Nothing caused life. Are you with me? Let's make sure you're with me. We got to get this straight. Are, are you? I, I need you to pay attention here because we're going to go fast here. You folks, let me, let me, let me. Pick on those folks out there that are outside of the, the proper perspective of something. You, those who prefer the perspective of the board game of life, or the Big Bang Theory, let's say, that is evolutionist, secularist, uh, materialist, and uh, we'll even go as far as Darwinianist. You want me to believe that something was nothing, made something out of nothing to be something to be nothing, made something out of nothing to be nothing to be something into. Now the nothing that is not something, something's in it, which is now nothing, which is nothing with something in it, that's a vacuum. And something with nothing in it, that's a field. So you took something out of nothing and made nothing out of something. Now, that something, apostle, or possession there, that something's being nothing, and something's nothing in it, and that's expanding. Whew. Better practice that one, Rick. My preachers. Did the Big Bang just go off in your head? Folks. I can. Yes, I can. You get the notes, though. Folks, with the intelligent mind that God gave me through His design as well as your mind, I have come to the conclusion that nothing is foolishness and something is God. Amen. Good thing I don't have COVID. People, please understand, uh, if your premise, that's the base of, or your perspective is wrong, that is your, you start with nothing, then your conclusion in life will be bad or nothing, or we can even say, say evil. However, if you start with something when your conclusion is always good, God is very good, yes? And what are we after? Goodness. Goodness of God. Goodness of God, and that's if that if we start off with that, the conclusion is always good. But if you're suffering and you're trying, you got to struggle through this, folks, is what I'm trying to say. You can't just sit here and think it's going to fall on you. That's known as imperialism, I believe. That you believe knowledge happens just through the senses and your intuition. That is not how knowledge happens, it's a wrong perspective. Our, our perspective is looking for the sign 
of Jonah. And who is the sign of Jonah now? Jesus. Through his perspective, through his teachings, that's just not going to fall on you. That will then give you the conclusions, the fruit of the Spirit that we're all after. Again, why would you waste your life adding value to nothing towards the goodness of life? Today, I'm going to encourage you, beginning in this new year, won't you once and for all anchor yourself in the goodness of God? That's your personal relationship with God, but then transcend to your ultimate purpose where you now are living in antithesis or in relationship with God and others where you can truly play the game of life. Some of you will not make that decision today, but some of you will. So I encourage you to make that decision, and get out of your selfishness, and let's add value to something rather than nothing. Let's end where we started with 2 Corinthians 9.8 which says, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good what? Work. Amen? The message, the game of life.